This is Concept E Classes and today we'll deal with Chapter 13 of Class 8 Science Sound Part 2. So in Part 1, we saw how sound is produced. Sound is produced by a vibrating body. Then we saw that sound is produced in humans by the voice box or a larynx. Then we also dealt that sound needs a medium to travel. It can travel through solid, liquid and gas except for vacuum. And finally, we studied how we can hear sound through our ears. Now, in this video, we'll deal part 2. And in part 2, we'll study about amplitude, time period and frequency of vibration. What are audible and inaudible sounds? What is the difference between noise and music? And finally, noise pollution. Now, the first topic of part 2 is amplitude, time period and frequency of a vibration. Now, we already studied that sound is a form of energy created when an object vibrates. What do you mean by vibration? The to and forth or the back and forth motion of an object is called as vibration. For example, when a person plays a guitar, we can see that there is a to and forth motion. This motion of the string is termed as vibration. And when the string vibrates, sound is produced. Now, vibration is also called as oscillatory motion. This is an example of an oscillatory motion, a swinging pendulum. Here we can see that there is a repeated to and fro motion from the mean position. Hence, we can say that vibration is also an oscillatory motion. Now, how is sound produced when an object vibrates? We have already studied that in part 1. We studied there that when a vibrating object vibrates, it causes the surrounding particles in the medium to vibrate. Then here what that is what happens here is that the particles they collide with each other and then they collide with the neighboring particles and they keep on colliding till the vibration reaches a ear. And when the vibration reaches a ear we are able to hear the sound. Now this periodic disturbance inside the medium is termed as a wave. So here we say this portion as a compression and rarefaction. Uh, if you want to know more about it, message me in the comment section and I'll give you a detailed lecture about waves. So in short, we can say that sound propagates through a medium in the form of waves or when an object vibrates, sound waves are formed. So generally, we can say that wave is a continuous repeating pattern in which some type of energy is carried. That is, it is the periodic disturbance of particles in a medium which carries some type of energy such as sound, light or heat. An example of a wave is the ripples inside the water. If we throw a stone inside the water, we can find ripples in the water. That is here there are disturbance in the particles of the water at regular intervals of time. So this is the best example of a wave. So we studied that when an object vibrates, sound wave is produced. Now a sound wave is characterized by its amplitude, frequency and time period. Let's see what is amplitude, frequency and time period. Amplitude. Amplitude refers to the maximum displacement of a particle in a medium from its central position in either direction. So we already studied that a wave is the periodic disturbance of a particles inside a medium. Now the maximum displacement of a particle in the medium from its rest position or the central position in either direction is termed as amplitude. This is the amplitude of this wave. See the maximum displacement from its central position. Now if the amplitude, if the particle moves farther from the central position, the amplitude would be more and if the a uh, particle moves less from the central position, the amplitude would be less. Now let's see what is frequency. The number of oscillations or vibrations per second is called as frequency. That is the number of vibrations or oscillations made in one second is called as the frequency of the sound. For example, here if we consider uh, this wave, we can see that it oscillates two times. And here the object, the object it oscillates 10 times. So here if the less is the number of vibrations in one second, we can say that it has low frequency. And if the vibrations are more in one second, the object would have high frequency. And the frequency is always expressed in hertz. So here the object it oscillates 
10 times in one second. Hence, the frequency would be 10 hertz. Now, let's see what is time period. Time period of a wave is defined as a time taken by a wave to complete one oscillation. That is, for example, here if we can see that the wave starts from here. Now, the time required by the wave to complete one oscillation is termed as time period. And we can say that uh, it is equal to 1 by that of frequency. That is, if the frequency of a wave is about 10 hertz, then time taken for one vibration or one oscillation is equal to 1 by 10. And it is always expressed in seconds. The next subtopic that we are going to study is loudness and pitch. We hear a variety of sounds in our surrounding and even though the sounds are different, we are able to recognize them. How is that possible? We are able to differentiate the sound on the basis of amplitude and frequency. Let's see how. So the first term that we are going to study is loudness. The loudness of a sound depends on the amplitude and its unit is decimal. Now how can we determine the loudness? The loudness is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the vibration producing the sound. That is if the amplitude of a sound is 2 then the loudness would be Four. And when the amplitude of the vibration is large, then the sound produced would also be loud as loudness is proportional to the square of the amplitude. And if the amplitude is small, then the sound produced would be feeble as well. For example, if we take the example of a roaring lion, we can hear that the roar would be very loud and we can hear it in a very long distance. Whereas the sound of a bird, here the amplitude is very small. Hence the sound produced by the bird would also be feeble. Hence we can differentiate the sound between the two animals based on the amplitude. Now let's see what is a pitch. The frequency determines the shrillness or the pitch of the sound. If the frequency of vibration is higher, if the frequency is higher, then the sound is shrill and it would have a higher pitch. And if the frequency of vibration is lower, we say that the sound has a lower pitch. For example, a drum. The drum vibrates with a low frequency. Therefore, it produces a low pitch sound. On the other hand, a whistle. It has a high frequency and therefore it produces a sound of higher pitch. Similarly, if we hear the voices of children and adults, we can see a difference in the frequency as well. Here, the voice of a woman they would have higher frequency as that compared to a man. If the frequency is higher, then they would have a more shrilled voice as compared to that of man. So the next topic in this chapter is audible and inaudible sounds. We know that we need a vibrating body for the production of sound. But can we hear the sound of all vibrating bodies? No. Some cases we can hear and in some cases we cannot hear. Hence, we can differentiate sounds into audible sounds and inaudible sounds. The sound of frequencies roughly from 20 to 20,000 hertz can be heard by the human ear. Such sounds are called as audible sounds. Those sounds which we can hear are called as audible sounds. And the sound of frequencies less than 20 hertz and greater than 20,000 hertz cannot be heard by human ear. Such sounds are called as inaudible sounds. Now those frequencies which are higher than 20,000 hertz are called as ultrasound and those sound of frequencies below 20 hertz are termed as infrasounds. Hence, we can say that for human ear, the range of audible frequencies is roughly from 20 to 20,000 hertz. Now, there are animals like giraffe, elephants, alligators, rhinos and hippos. They can hear infrasounds and they can also produce infrasounds for communication. And there are animals like um, dogs or dolphins or whales or bats, mice, frogs. They can use ultrasounds for communications. And even the ultrasound equipments that we are used, uh, that we use in medical uh, equipments, they also work at frequencies higher than 20,000 hertz. So the next topic of this chapter is noise and music. We have different types of sound around us. 
Sometimes the sound would be pleasing to hear and sometimes it may cause discomfort to us. So those unpleasant sounds that causes an annoying effect to the ear is called as noise. For example, the sounds that comes from a construction site, it causes discomfort to us. So this is an example of noise. Now what is music? It is the sound which is pleasing to the ear. For example, the music or the sounds coming from a musical instrument. It creates a soothing effect or it is pleasing to our ear. Hence, it is an example of music. Now, let's see what is noise pollution. We know that air pollution is the presence of unwanted gases or particles in the air. Similarly, the presence of excessive or unwanted sounds in the environment is called as noise pollution. Now, the major sources or causes of noise pollution are the sound of vehicles, the explosions including the burst of crackers, missions, loudspeakers or some of the home appliances that we use for example television, the transitor radios at high volumes, some kitchen appliances, desert coolers, air conditions all of these contribute noise pollution. What do you mean by noise pollution? It is a presence of unwanted or excessive sounds in the environment. So the presence of this excessive noise in the surroundings may cause many health related problems like the lack of sleep, hypertension or high blood pressure, anxiety or sometimes even permanent or temporary impairment of hearing that is we might may lose the ability to hear. So what can be done to limit noise pollution? So in order to control the noise we must control the sources of noise. So for the first one that can be done is that we should use silencing devices in aircraft engines, transport vehicles, industrial machines and home appliances. And all noisy operations must be conducted away from any residential area. Noise producing industries should also be set away from such areas and use of automobile horns should be minimized. TV and music systems should run at low volumes and finally we should plant more trees along the roads and around the buildings uh, to cut down the sounds reaching the residents thus reducing the harmful effects of noise pollution. So that's all for chapter 13 sound. Tune in soon for the next session. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe if you find the contents useful. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care and bye-bye.